Hi again people, I didn't think part 1 would be so popular, so here's part 2 and another set of observations. I apologize beforehand if the pace is a bit fast, but we're trying to squeeze the largest number of points in the shortest time possible here. You'll need to pause in the second half to read the bonuses, so be ready. It's amazing how incomplete Quranic translations can be no matter how perfect. The word translated as night visitor, or sometimes one who hammers here, as many old interpretations understood it, is tariq, which also means one who knocks. Hold on a sec. A piercing star which knocks? Does this make sense? It will. Listen. What you just heard wasn't me tapping on the mic. That's the sound of what they call a pulsar, a type of star which emits radiation so dense that it's capable of piercing through virtually anything it collides with. Here's the faster one. You feel cool now, huh? Now let's read the verse again. Makes sense. Just ask about anyone a thousand years ago, especially Arabs about mountains, and they'll tell you it's the firmest thing they could think of. But God says otherwise. How did Muhammad know? وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَتَيْنِ فَمَحَوْنَا آيَةَ اللَّيْلِ وَجَعَلْنَا آيَةَ النَّهَارِ مُبْصِرَةً Today we know that the sign of the night, which is the moon, had strong volcanic activity about 3.9 billion years ago, meaning that it was illuminating before it became dull about 3 billion years ago. Hey, you're not googling everything I'm telling you, right? Good, because you should trust me. I know the English translation looks a bit lame, but let's see here. God is speaking about great things which are receding, running, returning to their homes or sweeping. For centuries, that was interpreted as planets, since they hide during their time. But now we can notice that it alludes to black holes. <coughs> they run through space, sweeping anything and everything in their way. In fact, the Quranic expression is more accurate than black holes. Can you imagine a hole in space? Why locusts? Well, unlike other insects, locusts bury their eggs under the ground. Then larvae spend as much as 17 years there before they begin to fly in swarms. That's surprisingly similar to how people stay so long under the ground before resurrection when they suddenly burst out. Needless to say, Ancient people knew nothing of the locust life cycle, and Quranic interpretations don't even mention it. That information was revealed later, but before that, God knew it.
In 2002, a group of non-Muslim researchers proved that the frontal lobe is responsible for the so-called good and bad decisions. Are you beginning to understand why did God specifically call that person's forehead lying and sinful? وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأُ مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرِي فَأَوْقِدْ لِي يَا هَامَانُ عَلَى الطِّينِ فَاجْعَلْ لِي فَاجْعَلْ لِي صَرْحًا لَعَلِّي أَطَّلِعُ إِلَى إِلَهِ مُوسَى Ex-Chief Paris University surgeon Maurice Bocay, who was the Saudi King Faisal's personal physician and was later awarded by the French Medicine Academy, said in his book that he mentioned the title Haman to a hieroglyphics expert, telling him it was cited in a 7th century document. The guy told him that was impossible since hieroglyphic was long lost at the time and no one was able to read it again except when Jean Champollion deciphered the Rosetta Stone in 1822. Bukai converted to Islam, but hey, maybe Muhammad just guessed it. It's statistics time! I'd like to stress that I checked every single upcoming statistic using computer searches. I encourage you here, just like in part 1, to seek the help of an Arab Christian online friend to verify there is no tricks. But first make sure you wrap something around your head because your jaw will drop. Get up, I'm not done yet. It's impossible that an illiterate false prophet would bother putting all those balances in order for people to find them long after his death when they invent computers. If he could put them, that is. And I didn't even try to verify everything, nor have we even discovered everything yet. Again, it's not just about the scientific miracles. As time passes, now Muslims unknowingly endorse Quranic legislation. For example, Christians gave up on banning divorce, realizing it's inevitable. Americans tried to prohibit alcohol in the 20s, seeing how harmful it was. And today's interest rates approach zero as they keep plummeting. Guys, this book is from God. He knew what was going to work for us and what wasn't before we attempt to find on our own with trial and error. Did you know that there is a 1400-year-old Ahmed challenge to produce one chapter as eloquent as the Qur'an's Arabic? Some chapters are as short as a couple of lines. Producing a similar surah will immediately destroy the whole Islamic creed. <laughs> In the end, sure, a coincidence or two or three or four might happen, but for all that to be coincidences? Come on, what do you want it to say to be persuading then? The origin of the universe? I didn't know about you folks, but I wouldn't want to risk not believing in that book, as then I'd most probably end up spending more time than I wish for in, um... Let's just say it's a very warm place. وَمَا كَانَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ أَن يُفْتَرَى مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلَكِن تَصْدِيقَ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَتَفْصِيلَ الْكِتَابِ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ مِنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ